this is Brenda, and I am here with the Standout Stars Week of Kindness and Gratitude Summit and Gift Giveaway. And I'm so pleased and proud to bring to us today a beautiful conversation with Mary Lynn Ross. Welcome to the summit, Mary Lynn. Oh, thank you, Brenda. It's been a long time coming, isn't it, getting here? It's wonderful. It is. It's wonderful to have you here. The reason why we have you is because you're part of the Secret Child Life After Loss book. And in that book, you share some words of wisdom and the, the story, a little brief story about your son, Byron, and how he has inspired you. I wonder if you could share a bit of your story. Well, I just said a moment ago, some of us feel our, the presence of our children. And that's the healing that comes when you know that wherever they are, they're okay. That the veil between our life and the next is almost invisible. And they're always flooding around if we tune into them. And um, Byron and I had a lot of very incredible spiritual experiences together and during his life. And um, we meditated together, we chanted together, we did movies together. And so meditation in our life became meditation in action. Meaning we don't have to home home for hours and hours. That if we focus on something where, and we really give it our all every moment, whether it's, eating our breakfast that we really chew and we're present with it and byron taught me a lot to be present because i'm an action person running around here doing this doing that oh i gotta get that done oh good there she is i mean <laughs> all kinds of things and he taught me when he was very little we were out playing shooting hoops right and he was shooting him and he had such focus and he was little it, it was a long shot and he got most of them in and i was watching him and i said you know i want to try this he said okay mom go ahead and i pretended for a minute i was him and i really focused and i threw the hoop it went in oh. i threw the next one it went in 13 in a row, that's what he had done. So now the tiebreaker was ready. If I threw the next one in, I would have won the game. So I started thinking about winning the game and I got excited and I thought, no, maybe I shouldn't. He's a little boy. Why do I feel so competitive to beat him? And my mind's going on. He said, mom, throw already. And I missed. <laughs> And that was the lesson, this focus, this kind of really being present. And I know we're talking about kindness now. And kindness is being present. Kindness, the greatest thing we can do for someone is to actually listen. And to listen with our heart, to listen with every fiber of our being. And that brings me to another story about Byron. He was 12 years old, going on 13. He was almost a teen. And he came running home one day, and then he, in his usual way, and then he got very, very, very silent. And he looked at me and he said, Mom, we really need to have a talk. I said, sure, okay, whatever. And he said, no, this is really important. He said, because right now I'm at a certain age where I know you love me, but you've got to start letting go. You have to let go a little bit, mom. I mean, you, you worry about my homework, you do this, you, you do everything for me, mom. Now I've got to start doing things for myself. And he took out a little pad of paper and he drew a circle. And in the, on the edge of the circle, he put a little six stick figure. And he said, Mom, that circle is the world. And that figure is me. I'm ready to now go climb into the world to find out my own mistakes and learn and, and grow and be and 
oh yeah, don't worry, mom. I'm not talking about drugs that I need to do things like that. But I, do you hear me? Yes, he was talking. I swear it was the first time I just saw the beautiful being that he was. Mm -hmm. I was, I brought me to just an awe of this incredible young man that was growing and flourishing and dreaming. And I just sat there, wow, wow, look at him. And then we finished, oh, by the way, he hadn't been hugging me much. He would be avoiding me for about a week or so. And I sort of missed that, but I hadn't had a hug. All of a sudden at the end of this, he looked at me and he said, oh, mom, and he gave me the best hug we'd had in, in ages. And then he said to me, mom, this is the best conversation we ever had. Oh. And I hadn't said one word. Wow. So I learned about listening is such a gift of kindness. When we can see the soul of someone, when we can see who they truly are, we won't always see all the things that bug us about the person. We can start accepting them. And then I can go on and on about how we need to accept ourselves. But that surely is kindness. And, and I, I love these stories that you're sharing of Byron. He's, he was such an amazing young man. He truly was. And he uh, still continues to inspire and just really be um, a way shower, doesn't he? Even though he's passed between here and there. Yes, and he accomplished so much in such a short time. I should have recognized, and I did. I had one strange flash. He was probably about seven years old, and I had a flash of how long I was in. I didn't have my kid at 18 like my mother did. I had him more in the 30s, and I said, you know, how long can I live? You know, my mother died early. So how long can I live to get him to a certain point? And a year came to me. My age, how old I would be. I said, that's good. Take me to that and I'm happy. When I hit that age, that's the year he died. Oh. So we there's a knowing that we have. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of us that can't know everything about our future. And when it was that age, I understood. I understood. I couldn't have known. I could, how, how would you raise a child if you knew the day they were going to die? That's right. Yeah, exactly. And so many parents do have this premonition, this knowingness that something is going to happen, even if the clarity isn't there. But one of the things I really think really stands out is if it wasn't for Byron passing, do you think he would have taken on the role of advocacy like you have in your career in life? Believe it or not, I had taken it on and he was our youth spokesperson person around the world before I passed. He made he made president, he met presidents, he was at the White House. I had my advocacy going before he passed. And since he had, and, and my programs were going, we had the Peace Smarts, we had different things, but he was our national spokesperson, an easy thing, because if I was traveling, <laughs> he, he was in the suitcase, you know? Yeah. But, but what it did do, Byron left me with another legacy. When, Shortly before I passed, I was writing my book, Bounce Off the Walls, Land on Your Feet, How to Morph Havoc and Hassles into Harmony and Happiness, and they all start with HA, and we always say they're my ha-has, okay, because I, even my epitaph that I've written says she giggled her way into heaven. I have a feeling that that's maybe the only gift I have occasionally is to make people laugh. Of course, we're not doing that right now, but but we're laughing with our hearts. We're smiling in our hearts because truth is what elevates it. Okay, so I wrote, I almost almost done with this book, so to speak, the rewrite, the rewrite. He read it, he, read, he said, mom, 
you got to get this out. It's going to help a lot of people. And then he said, and then you're going to do your wish for me. I said, well, what's your wish for me? He said, be real, laugh, and love. Mm -hmm. So when he passed, I was left with his mom. You got to get your book out. It'll help a lot of people. And that started a new chapter of finishing this book. I would hear his voice or laugh. I hear him laugh at me usually because moms can be ridiculous and I get a award for it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, that, that legacy to be real laugh and love and to finish that book was a new trajectory. Mm -hmm. I did hundreds of shows. I, I traveled many places with the book. And wherever I went, I knew that there was something there for me and for people. Because when you give, it's the greatest gift of all. You get back. You get, you get this elevated joy. That's why kindness and gratitude and you know how you start your day is the key. It's the key for me to my day. That's How amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. And, um, and Byron continues to inspire you every single moment of every single day. And, and I think it's just beautiful that you have been able to share him with us here on this summit. And um, I'd love to hear a little bit about what are your future plans and where are you going with, with all your beautiful work? This is a very interesting time. I've climbed my mountains. I've gotten my awards. I've met the wonderful people. I met you, Brenda. My future right now, it's not like I have a big vision like I ever did. My vision now is an equilibrium. It's like on a moment to moment, it doesn't mean I don't have goals or functions, but it's not the same. It ha it's in, there's a zeitgeist going on right now. Mm -hmm. The whole world, we're experiencing some very heavy duty things and we're experiencing it together. And my ambition for myself is to be in total unity as a human being on this planet with other humans. And I say, we're all human. We, we have to drop our politics for a second and our religion can be, if we really follow our religion, whatever it might be, and whether we are in the Christ light, the this light, whatever it is, there's only one thing coming through. So arguing about this, or well, he isn't that, he's not a good man, he doesn't do, Judgments have to stop. We're doing it to ourselves mm -hmm. and we can't do this anymore because I like to say one thing, not only being human, we are also earthlings. <laughs> We're not Martians. If they came down here, they said, who are you? I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say which party, that party, but I'd say, well, you know, I'm a this and I'm a this and I'm a that. Oh, really? Are you all this, that, and that? I couldn't say it. There's only one commonality. We're earthlings with his soul. Mm -hmm. And we're in this body. So my vision is I want to remember that every day. And whatever I do will be blessed because I won't come from my ego self. I'll be coming from a pure self. So I work on that every day. I wake up before I get out of bed. I, <laughs> I'll, I, I lie, I'm, this is meditation in action. I'm lying there and my eyes open like Carlos do. Aren't your first eye opening of the day. So what? I, oh my gosh, I'm here again. Wow. Oh. I'm breathing. Wow. I want to make this the best day I can. That, and I don't get out of bed 
to life is of three things or four even, whatever comes, of why I'm happy to be here. My gratitude, I, first my breath and then whatever. And then I don't get out of bed till I have a smile on my face. A little one, some days are rougher, mm, might be that, mm. but it's, it's a commitment. And I offered that, try it. Absolutely, I think that that's amazing. A great way to start the day is with a grateful heart. And even if you can't find something big, it's the little things that make all the difference. That's right. And the biggest one for me, as I've grown older now, is that if we don't are kind to ourselves, if we ignore, and kind to ourselves is in our thoughts, putting ourselves down, comparing ourselves, judging ourselves, not eating right, uh, not caring about our body anymore. We're not kind to ourselves. And yet we're serving everyone else. And then you have to say, why am I serving everyone else if I don't serve me? This is an ego. This is just, hey, can you just hug yourself every day? And, oh, I love little Mary Lynn. You say, whoever you are, just play, have fun. Love that little person in you that it's always been with you. You have always been with you. So who else do you know? And that's our goal, all of us. Well, I can't say what your goal is, but the goal of my life is to grow and better and, and, and learn. A beginner's mind, learn. Keep learn something every day. I noticed I was forgetting words here and there, and I thought, Ew, could that be that COVID thing overlapping? Could that be age? What, what's this with my brain? I can't remember names. Well, I never was good at names. I never forget a face. But I had to look at myself and say, well, what is it? And I realized there's a lot of anxiety and fear in our world now. Mm -hmm. And if you're an empath out there, you're going to pick it up. So we have to breathe and clear and make space for ourselves. Yeah. And then we, when we serve someone, it's not like, okay, I did that for you, you owe me one. You know, there's a lot of that. Sure is. I, and how about that little book? I mean, where is it? A Thousand Acts of Kindness, number one. And then all the acts are much more joyous. That's true. That's I'm, preaching, I'm preaching again. <laughs> Yeah, you know, wonderful. You know, and, and it's true because um, kindness, you can only give from the well of kindness that you have within you. And and so to fill up your own cup is the very first and best thing you can do. And from there, it doesn't matter how much, um, what we have to journey through. As long as that we know that we have what it takes to make it through the journey, we can we can do anything. Whether it is the journey of grief, the journey of wealth and, and uh, success, whatever it is. When we start with ourselves with kindness and having that gratitude, the world looks better, it responds better, and we can make it a better place together, which is what this is all about. And so I'd like to invite everyone to check out The Secret Child, Life After Loss. Thank you, Mary Lynn, for sharing your copy. We just made bestseller on Amazon. And we're so proud to share this wonderful news with everyone. That's fantastic. And there's no doubt that anyone out there who even has a friend or knows of, we've all lost someone, whether it's a relative where, you know, we've lost and we have the loss of many things. But this book, I was reading it again last night. And there's certain stories in it that have such proof of all kinds of miracles. And um, you may not think that could be, but read this book and you'll see. And then you'll have your own stories too, that will be magnificent, magnificent to share. <laughs> I couldn't even get it out because it's magnanimous. <laughs> <laughs> truly is, truly. Thank you so very much for being with us and in the book and part of this summit touching lives and instilling kindness and gratitude all around the world.
and for the secret child life after loss and the whole family of us, we invite you to go to our special gift page. So if you go to www.thesecretchildbookseries.com forward slash WOK, you'll see a magnificent array of gifts and, and goodies from all of the contributing authors just for you. So thank you very much for being with us. And Mary Lynn, thank you for being an author, an advocate, an activist, and everything that you do to make the world a better place. And you too, Deborah. You are the best. Brenda, I'm going to do an acronym and send it to you if your name. Brenda. Okay, sounds nice. That's great. So thank you for being with us. And this concludes this episode. Join us again for more great conversations on the Kindness and Gratitude Summit and Gift Giveaway. Bye-bye.